I knew. 13 years, an icon, a star, four Pro Bowls. Michael Vick joining us here on a Monday to talk some Lamar Jackson and Deshaun Watson. You know, I want to start with something. <clears throat> I, you know, I was saying, if, if I had a son and my son was a little smaller and played quarterback and he'd had two or three injuries, and I, I'm a dad and I'm sitting there and thinking, I wouldn't say it publicly, yeah, but I'd be like, i got to be honest, I'd love you to fall to the Chargers or Carolina, stable coaches. Sounds good. You know, everybody's like, make your money now. But, Mike, none of you guys at quarterback make your money in your first contract. You no. make it in your second, third, and fourth. Yeah. So let me talk about Tua. In a weird way, smaller at the position, banged up. Could you make an argument slipping about seven spots in the draft is a, is a silver lining? Well, I think you can make the comparison to what happened to Lamar. Uh, Lamar could have easily went early in the draft and ended up on a different team. Cleveland, Freddie yeah, Kitchens. Right, different offense, not the same. You know, he falls in the draft and ends up in a place where, you know, it was suitable for him. Right. So I think it's a good thing. Um, you know, I hated to see this happen to Tua, but he could fall in the lap of a team that really needs him, that has some uh, key pieces in place, has a defense, and and maybe have have a need for a quarterback. Sometimes it could be a blessing in disguise, and this may happen for this kid. He's, yeah. a, he's a great he's a great kid. Yeah. By the way, Indy's got the 22nd pick. Chargers have the 12th. Carolina's 18th. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You you put Tua with Christian McCaffrey because yeah. he's an incredibly accurate uh, thrower, and those Carolina wide receivers and Greg Olson. Greg Olson's like, I'm going to hold off on retiring in television yeah. for a year. Like you put him in yeah. Carolina, you can just watch. You're like, oh, okay. Right. Um, so let me let let's move to this. Um, Lamar Jackson, um, it's week 11, and they're healthy, they're hot, they're humming. Uh, he's smacking rec records everywhere. Yes. There is no question. I told you this yesterday. I, see, I watch Lamar, and I see you. What I also notice with him, Michael, he's getting better at throwing. He's getting better in the passing game. That's for sure. Let's talk about that. So you walk now. I always thought you were a better natural thrower. You were a great deep ball thrower day one yeah. in the NFL. But did you feel like that when you got to the NFL? Tell take me through the steps of what part of your game got better. Yeah, early in my career, it was about pushing the ball down the field, and that's why my deep ball was better than my intermediate throws. And years four, five, and six, the offenses started to change a little bit. The West Coast system, and I'm like. Okay, it's going to be more shallow crosses. It's going to be more in cuts. Uh, I got to be more precise. And having a strong arm sometimes can, can, you know, be a gift and a curse. You know, because now you chance and throwing balls in between defenders and you, you, you just putting everything into your arm strength and knowing that, look, I can fit a ball in. You think in Brent Favre style and it, then it, it, fall, it, it hurts you in, in a sense. So... You know, the intermediate game became important uh, later in my career and trying to finesse throws and not trying to throw everything hard because hard balls get tipped and then they get tipped and, and they get intercepted and I've been, you know, victim of that so many times. So it was all about precision passing as I got older and I like what Lamar's doing now because he don't have the strongest arm but it's accurate and he don't have to put velocity on everything that he throws. No, he's got a... By the way, you know, people have said he's Kaepernick. Kaepernick, to this day, never had touch. Lamar's got touch. He's got touch, yes. He can put the ball over the linebacker, yeah. in front of the safety. Um, do you worry when you watch him, oh, because he took a shot yesterday. Yeah. He you took got, a shot on the scramble. And I'm like, see, that is what's going to be the determining factor in year four, year five, year six. And when I was in my second year... Look, I had two shoulder injuries. I had both of my, like, hands, th thumbs were swollen on both hands, throwing hand. Was those, were those hand. from hits? Just from hits, just from contact. But I kept playing through it. And being young, you can sustain those injuries and you can keep going. You heal faster. But you heal faster. And as you get older, you know, Lamar will start to, you know, be more conservative and take care of himself throughout the course of the game. I think he's done a great job of that so far. Yeah. But if this offense doesn't change, he's going to be required to do the same things that he's been doing now over the next couple of years. Never forget, early in your career, you went to cold Green Bay and beat the Packers. Yeah. And Lamar is going to go to cold New England, potentially, and that could be his signature win early yeah. in his career. When, when Lamar now is kind of the talk of the NFL. When you were bursting into the NFL, and you were, you, you, there was about a two-year period, it was that Michael Vick was at the tip of everybody's yeah. tongue. Did it overwhelm you? Do you think Lamar is... Does he understand how big of a deal he is right now in the league? Yeah, I think he 
he will understand it. Uh, he'll look back at the history um, from guys that came before him. And, and like you, you said, and I referenced what you, you was talking about with tour. You know, your contract money really don't come into your second and third contract, but you got to get to that second contract. So all my motivation was in getting through year one, year two, year three, year four, and making sure that those were the best years of my career and that money wasn't the object, objective. It was more about being consistent and playing good football and being the best quarterback that I can be. So that overrode everything. Yeah. And then, you know, I just let everything else fall into place. Yeah, there's, I, I find Lamar incredibly likable, uh, not divisive, fun, likable, getting better. Yeah. I think we forget sometimes guys walk into this NFL. Tom Brady's first three years in the league, he yeah. was not the Tom Brady no. against Atlanta in the Super Bowl. Yes. Like, Dak is clearly better today than a year ago. Yes. You can watch Dak at the, yeah, let's talk about the Cowboys. I watch Dak at the line of scrimmage now, and I, this is something I pay attention to. Total He's, control. He, no, what, so when he's pointing, what is he doing? He's probably pointing out defenders, pointing out who's going to blitz. Um, you know, he could be miking, you know, changing the protection. That's probably what it is most of the time. He does this now. He didn't do yeah. this two years ago. Yeah, he probably, does this a lot. He's recognizing what's about to happen. He's just informing everybody of, you know, what play is, needs to be called or what has to happen. Do you, um, you know, we, we, guys like me have been critical. He doesn't throw a, a pretty ball. Um, as a thrower, what do you see when you watch Dak? Um, precision. You know, I, I don't see him forcing a lot of balls. I think he's very accurate. I think he puts the ball in, in places where only his receivers can get it. You don't see a lot of balls getting tipped or batted away. Um, and he, he's, he's done it, you know, since he stepped behind the center for the Dallas Cowboys. And that's one of the things I admired, admired about him. I think his first pass I ever seen him throw was like a seam to a slot receiver up the, up the sideline and like his first pass in the preseason game against the Rams years yeah. ago. And I was like, this guy got touch. And he's continued to show that over and over and over again. And when you're an offensive coordinator and you see a guy who can you know, take control of a game with his arm, I mean, it's exciting. You know, it gets an offensive coordinator, you know, excited about what he can present to this guy week in and week out. Yeah, and by the way, they do have some really Michael Gallup, Randall Cobb, Amari Cooper. Uh, weapons. They, the, the weapons are good. That, 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 listen, that helps. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about New England. So, you know, Tom Brady was grumpy after the game, and uh, I noticed last night we love to blame quarterbacks. Yeah. But New England's a mess at left tackle, and Tom is just, height, get rid yeah. of it, height, get rid yep. of it. Was there ever a moment in your career because I'm watching Brady last night. You could see he's visibly frustrated. Right. He's got young receivers right. and a mess at left tackle. Was there ever a moment in your career where there was an offensive lineman you didn't trust? In your head, ball snapped. Because I look at Brady last night, and I'm like, oh, he doesn't yeah. trust the yeah. left tackle at all. In, in 2012, Philadelphia, I just got beat up. Uh, we, it was musical chairs with the offensive line. Jason Peters was out, so... He was my left tackle. And, and good. And I can't even remember who the replacement work was. <laughs> there was no disrespect to that guy, but, right. you know, that was my concern. And I just remember playing against the Detroit Lions and the Dominica Sioux and, you know, he had a bunch of guys, Nick Fairley and, and all those guys, and they just, you know, kind of ran through our offensive line. It was a rough day for me, but... Did you get into you know, your I was head? super grumpy after the game as you, well. You, so when, when you were in the middle of that game, you knew coming out of the huddle. Yeah. I can't block him. Can't block him. I'm going to get beat up. I came into that game knowing that I was going to get hit, knowing that I was going to be the guy who had to stand tall back there and get punished, but I was willing to do it for, you know, the sake of my team. It, it wasn't the best feeling afterwards, but, you know, I felt good about stepping up. Now, we didn't win the game. We lost in overtime. But you knew when you had your oatmeal in the morning. Yeah, I, I knew when I was eating breakfast. I, I When I woke up, it was like... <sighs> Here we go again. <laughs> Let's do it. Because I watched Let's Brady last night. He doesn't have a deep threat. Do you think Gronk's going to come back? We watched him yesterday here at Fox. He, he now looks like an art curator. He doesn't uh, look like a blocking yeah, tight end. Yeah, he don't look like he, a blocking tight end. He's kind of skinny. He looked really good in the suit yesterday. He I didn't mean, he? Yeah, he was real, it was fitted. Uh, he, he, I think he's looking forward to the next phase of his career. I don't see him coming back, but New England always goes through this phase every year, I think. Um, what is that? <laughs> where the offensive line gets banged up, they lose a guy, um, and they force Tom to just change his game, force the offense to look different, and the ball comes out quick. And I think this helps them in the long run because it, it trends all the way to the Super Bowl, which they 
get to every year. Right. Pretty much. And they have their woes, but they always find a way to overcome it. And I'll never doubt the things that the New England Patriots can do, you know, with all the guys that they have within that building. Yeah, they got six more regular season games. Uh, then you've got to buy... Uh, they've got young receivers, Jacoby Myers, Nikhil Harry, and uh, they're mostly healthy right now. So my gut is they're 9-1, and one, AFC, New England or the field in the AFC. Yeah. I'd probably take New England. Mike Vick, great talking to you, bud. Thank you. Coming up in 20 minutes on a Monday where Colin was right, where Colin was wrong. And coming up next, there is one NFL team. The more I see them, even though they have a great record, the less I care for them. And I think everybody else likes them, and I'm starting to lose confidence. We'll talk about that coming up. Folks, when's the last time you got into your car, the weather was sloppy and wet outside, and you thought, man, I'm sure glad I haven't spent the extra money on wiper blades. Listen, bad weather's a headache to begin with. Alleviate the problems with a new Michelin Endurance XT silicone wiper blade. Listen, 16,000-mile drive. That's what the company put the blades through. Alaska to Argentina. Tundra. They wanted to see how durable the blades were. Thunder, wind, rain. Guess what? The blades have quad-tech four-layer coated silicone that repel that water and that hail and that ice. And it lasts two times longer than other blades. The new Michelin Endurance XT silicone wiper blades Real-world proven and real weather tough. Upgrade to the new Michelin Endurance XD silicone wiper blades today. They're available only at Walmart. They went 16,000 miles. All you need to do is go around the corner, go to the store, go to work. They'll handle it. Michelin.